So hello everyone, welcome to Living in Control podcast. I'm Reza Abraham, the author of In Control, a systematic approach on how to take complete control of your life and career and the co-founder of In Control Group, an organization with a mission to help people become in control of every aspect of their life and career. We imagine a world in where most people are in control of their life, a conscious life accompanied by conversion, contentment and consistency. So in today's podcast, we are going to talk about one of the most important pillar in living an in control life called cash, which is your ability to store, invest and smartly grow your wealth. The word cash represents money or wealth. This mysterious tool can make things possible at the same time impossible. Today, we have an incredible guest who spent over 30 years in financial planning, take it from storing, investing, and smartly growing your wealth. He holds a DBA, a PhD. He's a registered and certified financial planner, which is RFP and CFP. It sits in the board and panel of numerous institutes and universities. He has conducted over thousands of seminars, over 200 TV and radio appearances, 200 articles published in local and international newspaper and magazine. And he's currently attached with AKPK as the financial trainer and advisor, a very good friend of mine. Let's welcome Dr. Desmond Chong. Ah, Thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. I really appreciate. Wow. When I was going through your profile, you know, we know each other for some time. But then when I was going through your full profile, it was so impressive. You have done so much. Right. Mm -hmm. So how how did you even, uh, you know, when it comes to finances, it's one of the parts that a lot of people, they say, like, you know, should I spend on my own education? Should I spend on my own, like, you know, getting this certification and so on? So how did you come to that understanding that you got to invest on yourself first? That is something which is very impressive and can be easily seen in your profile. Especially for those who don't have a formal education, I'm here just to inform you. I'm actually a Form 5 school leaver. I just completed my secondary school and I start working at age 18. Mm, okay. Wow. <laughs> and uh, why I realized there's a need for me to do a formal education when I got my first job, I worked with an Australian-based company for about seven years. So I really wonder, you know, after seven years of working, there are no promotion. I still yeah. remain as a salesman. Mm. So I'm actually a top salesperson. Every year I lead the sales, but never get a promotion. Sure. Until one day, and I have a talk with my boss. He said, you know why, Desmond? You don't have uh, education. You mm. don't have a paper that we need and propose back to our HQ. And this is like what age you were? I naturally only 22 years old. Okay. That is year after I got married. Sure. And wow, I, you married also very young. <laughs> very young, very young. I know my, I know my, that time my girlfriend for seven years. So okay. we know each other since 16, 17 years old. So that was the time I really have to think twice. Mm. Am I continue to be a salesperson, give no security to my wife? Okay, and I realized that no, I have to change. Sure. At that time, uh, this is the message to you, never too late to start your education, no matter what. Correct. Okay, a, a Form 5 school leaver, uh, I, can, I think you can imagine how tough is it for us to do part-time. Mm. I started it from a diploma. I can tell you honestly, that time I really start to appreciate life and my wife. I tell you why, I tell you why. Because for me, reading an English book is not easy. Mm. I'm from a, a Chinese school background. I even have a problem to speak. In fact, my first job when I talk to my Australian boss, I don't even get a word from him. Sure. Okay, I don't understand him. And until I take a long, long time to just uh, help myself to learn. But when I get a first textbook, okay, I'm having a tough time. So my wife spent her whole month's salary, mm. bought me a translator. Oh, wow. Okay, I've been using, utilize the translator all the time. So uh, as what Dr. Riza just introduced me, I've been doing part-time study for the 20 over years, non-stop. Wow. So all this while, basically, all these things has come from part-time study. Part-time study. Wow. Yeah. So you got your degree, you got your master, yes. you got your PhD, and you go and get your DBA. Yes. It's like, it's really, really impressive. 
Yeah. So, so what do you say to those parents that sometimes you know they're thinking like, okay, so I wanna I wanna make sure my kids get their educations, like, but uh, you know, some of sometimes the the parents will say like, okay, my kids just want to become a YouTuber or they just want to go for like do streaming and all those stuff. Do that? Do I still need to invest my money on like education for them or? What, what, do you, what is your, your, your advice on that? Okay, maybe I just add on to Dr. Riza's questions. Most parents will be telling me this. Okay, Shall I let my kids stop study? Mm. Explore them to the working world? Or let them continue with their master degree mm. after completed the degree? So my, my reply to them is simple. Okay, when, you're, when you think your child or your kids already I mean, uh, uh, mature enough to think, what is education to them? Do I need education? I think I delete back to my case to you. Okay. Okay. Why I need to do my MBA, my master? Mm. It's because I need to climb up to another ladder of management. Sure. Okay. Then you carry on with your with your management with your MBA. So uh, no need to force your children nowadays whether should they study should they not study. Mm. Okay. But by saying that uh, the generation has changed. Yeah. It's not the same anymore. Last time, during my time, if you hold a diploma, already able to survive in the market. Yeah. But nowadays, without a degree, it's very difficult for you. It's just an entry requirement is different. Mm. Okay? The only thing is, uh, after your basic degree, you, you, you just cannot stop there. You have to continue looking what it will be the enhancement for me. Yeah. For example, if I'm the uh, marketing grad, okay? I know I'm very good in promoting, I'm very good in selling ideas. But do you think you need to equip yourself with financial planning or yeah. accounting? Yeah. Uh, that is the time they will continue and study. Yeah. And I always encourage that don't do your master too early. Don't do your master too early, your master degree. Why? Because you feel it may not in need during your uh, during your maybe your your, your study or employment work mm -hmm. until you reach certain level, the managerial levels. Then you need a better management skill. Yeah. Uh, then maybe the master just come in as a good time. Sure. Uh, then when you need to do a PhD, and you feel that I, I have enough for employment. I have enough for all this. But not everybody need to go for a PhD, right? Yeah. That, that, that's why there's a need basis. Yeah. So financial, it depends on the person. Yeah, exactly. You are Correct. right, Dr. Riza. Correct. So this is very uh, aligned to our financial planning. You go by your need and your goal. Sure. You don't do it for no other reason. So how, how did you get into like financial planning? Because when I was going through your like background, the whole profile, everything, it wasn't like started in a in a in a financial things, right? So you were in a like marketing, you were involved in sales, and then suddenly you 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 get into like you know financial world. Like what 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 inspired yeah. you actually to get okay. there? I think maybe I can share some Chinese philosophy with oh, the yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Chinese did say that, okay, from where you fail, where you fall, you have to stand from the same place and stand up again. Very nice. You don't avoid them. Yeah. Okay. You have to realize what's your problem. Sure. At that time why I start financial planning? Because my business failed. I see. My business feel because I don't have a proper or experienced financial management skill. And this is how many years ago? Uh, back to 2004. 2004. So yeah. we are talking about like closely almost like around 20 years ago. Yeah, close to 20 years ago. So I, I'm a very good salesman. Sure. I can turn around a company. The only problem is I lack of financial management skill. Mm. So that time I realized that I need to pick up the skill. Okay. That's why I involved in financial planning. After the business field, I started working for a public company for about two years. Mm. Then I realized that uh, maybe it's the time I need to start my own, uh, my, my own company. Sure. So I used to start a financial advisory firm on my own. Okay. Oh, so okay. I owned that firm. So your first business, what, what industry was that? Printing and packaging business. Printing it's totally packaging. different business. I see. Okay, so uh, uh, that I just discussed behind the scene with Dr. Riza. At that time, I, I'm not too sure. Maybe this sound uh, maybe too small business for you. But that time, if I wanted to start all over again, the machine, the machine cost me about two million ringgit. Wow, it's not easy for a starter. It's not a, a small business starter. Mm. Okay, so that required a lot of financial management skills. So I started in the wrong base. 
Okay. Okay. That's why, uh, as what Chinese say, okay, you know what's the problem now. At least I can, I, I can tell the whole world now. I learned my lesson. Yeah. Even though I lost a lot of money. Yeah. But that price is similar. I paying for my education, but I just not paying to the uni. Mm. I paying to the society. Mm. I paying through the uh, business environment because mm. I'm not as good at Dr. Riza, for example. You are the successful businessman. Mm. So I'm paying this as learning cost sure. in the business world. Yeah. And I realize where's my problem. Why I'm not as good at Dr. Riza is because you, are, you don't have the money management skill. Okay. I can tell you honestly what's the problem. It's, today, it's, it's relevant to today's topics, the cash flow. Sure. Business feel, according to uh, Suruhan Jaya Sharakat Malaysia, most business close within the within five years. It's simply because the company cannot carry on their cash flow. Mm. Okay, yeah. that's for the business feel. So I learned that from the hard way. I learned, learned it from the book. Yeah, I learned from the experience. And I think what happened in the last two years. Uh, I mean, now we are entering into getting to become endemic, right, in Malaysia. Uh, but if you look at it, like the last two years has been very, very difficult for some businesses. I mean, not only mm -hmm. uh, people, but also businesses. And I don't want to undermine there is a group of businesses and there is a group of people that they make a lot of money too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. it's, it's always a two way to look yes. at it. Like there are some people who took a lot of like, you know, opportunities here and then uh, they move way faster mm -hmm. and get a lot of things done. Yep. Yeah. And some people, they just like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And then they never innovate. They never do anything yeah. about it. But but cash was basically yeah. the, the key. It was cash was the king, I would say, yeah. you know, in the past two years. Right. So um, what what uh, what can we get uh, from this? Like, you know, if, if we want to summarize this whole pandemic, uh, which is hopefully going to be endemic and it's not going to turn yeah. back or anything. Um, it's um, well, what is the one financial lesson that you can like summarize from this whole thing? Okay, uh, I think I'm in the experience to explain to you. I joined AKPK 12 years ago, mm. so our topics always will be cash flow management. Mm. I can tell you honestly, 10 years ago, even though people are listening to us, cash flow, cash flow, okay, cash flow management, but I guess. Uh, very low percentage people are listening. Mm. But during the pandemic, uh, that already proved. Yeah. If you don't have a solid cash flow, cash flow and cash is different story. Mm. Cash flow, you have to ensure you have active income, passive income flow into your daily spending. Okay. okay? Whether you are a person yes. or you are a business, it exactly. doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. That two year proof a lot. Mm. Okay. Cash flow is king. Yeah. It's not cash is king. Cash flow is king. Okay. Okay. If you don't have the cash flow in, it's just like we are our body running our oxygens. Sure. Okay. How can we live without oxygens? Yeah. Okay. And and, and and maybe you can tell me you have a lot of reserve, but even we have reserve, I still need that cash flow. Sure. Okay. That topic I can summarize it. The two years the emphasis a lot on cash flow. Yeah. But what do you say to those people who say like, well, you know what? Uh, my cash flow was really good. But then somehow rather because of the pandemic, I lost my cash flow. So now, uh, I mean, that's not, a, that's not the best way to tell me. Like, you know, I understood what is cash flow, but I never thought about it, you know, and the whole thing is just, just, just okay. kidding me. So from cash flow, uh, I, I started with cash flow problem first. Mm. If you have no problem with cash flow, like just what Dr. Riza said, certain company are making very good, making good money even during the pandemic. Yeah. So what will be the next step? The next step is, are you utilize your cash flow correctly? That means from the cash that you earn, mm -hmm. are you using it as a reserve or are you doing it for uh, spending? Are you doing it for unnecessary spending or expanding? Okay. Okay. That is going into the management, your wealth management. I see. Yeah. So whether you do it the right way or not. Mm. Okay. People, so so yeah. let's say, for example, if you want to look at it from personal perspective, mm. because yeah. uh, many of the people who are mm. listening to us today, maybe they're not coming from business background, you know, or they're like, you know, um, the ordinary people mm. uh, living their life, mm. having their salaries, mm. or maybe they're running their own mm. businesses and so on. Like, so is there, is there any like formula or percentage that we can put it on okay. like okay what's the percentage should go to reserve what's the percentage should go for it 
Why and not? We, don't want to, yeah. we don't want to talk about the past. Though, <laughs> understand, because understand. the past is already I past, understand. right? So now, yeah. let's say yeah. today is a fresh start yes. for us. Yeah. Why not I give you one case study example to right, easily understand this topic? That would be great. Okay, for example, uh, if today uh, I have a strong cash flow, mm. okay, uh, both myself and Dr. Riza, okay, we have a strong cash flow. We okay. run the business. Yeah. So uh, I used to be a car lover, a sport car lover. Okay. Okay. So I will come and approach uh, Dr. Riza. Hey, Dr. Riza, okay, I just came across because of the pandemic, mm. one of my friends, his Ferrari is on sales. Oh, wow. Okay, so from 2 million now, it's only costing us 1 million. Okay. And our company is making fantastic sales. Sure. Okay, I think, okay, we should be the time now we enjoy the moment of ours. Okay, mm -hmm. let go for it. Yeah. Okay, but when Dr. Riza come back to me, uh, Desmond, okay, uh, we only have 200,000 cash mm. reserve mm. okay of course the cash flow is coming in yeah so what is your idea that get a loan what's the problem because the cash flow is coming in sure okay so what are we doing here we are actually hoping the future cash flow paying for this luxury unnecessary spot mm. car at this so moment. you're betting basically on the future business that is not you are hoping yet that the there. business is going as usual cool. sure okay yeah. But now you are using the reserve mm. to pay for the car, the car tower payment. Yep. So if I use back the similar case study, going back to our personal life. Yeah. Okay. Just imagine now, uh, I have reserve. Okay. But that reserve actually for emergency fund. Sure. It, it doesn't mean for you to just to spend. Okay. So the formula is as such. Okay. How much reserve we have to keep. Mm. Okay. After pandemic. I think now we can safely say minimum three to six months. Mm. Okay. So what is the formulas? The formula is very simple. Based on your expenses or salary, mm -hmm. for example, your expenses is three thousand ringgit. Okay. Your reserve three months mean nine thousand. So that nine thousand should actually need to park in the bank account or anything can be easily liquidated. Mm. If you feel that no, no, Desmond, I don't feel three months is enough because you are at worst profile. Yeah. Okay. Then go for six months. Yeah. So eighteen thousand. So for people who have the idea how to start up with, okay, let's do this first. Your reserve. Mm. Okay. So once the reserve have been uh, developed, okay, now you focus on your cash flow. Mm. Your cash flow means ensure that if you are earning active income, you are the employee. Mm -hmm. Please don't lose this job. <laughs> okay. Okay. Carry on the cash flow. Carry on the cash flow, if possible. I also might request you, hey, can you speed up to make more reserve? How to speed up? Either get an increment, get a promotion. Mm. Uh, that link to our topic, another topic today. Yeah. How can I get promote? Yeah. Okay, maybe uh, education, you get your yourself a master, and yes. yourself a master, or yes. I learn an additional skill. Mm. Okay. Or have a conversation with your superior and ask like, what does it take for me to get that promotion yes, yes. or increase? That's what I learned from Dr. Riz. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, the the topic that actually you were talking about, like three to six month reserve, is something that we spoke about it in the book as well. Yep. We call it as like the in control account, yes, you know, yes. which I mentioned there. Like you know, uh, safely people need to have like at least mm -hmm. about six months yep. of reserve, which yep. you can easily cash out. Yes. You know, you can liquidify it very fast. Mm -hmm. So you. You don't easily, you know, if that six month is in a, in a form of like, you know, property, yeah. uh, perhaps you might end up actually losing money yes. there because you're in rush to get the money out, yeah. you know, and most people, they make that mistakes too. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I was, I was uh, very, very like upset the other day when I was like talking to, uh, to a very good friend of mine from uh, like, you know, so he was, he was sharing with me about this uh, recent study that they have done it by Malaysia Financial Planning Council that they found like, you know, 60% of Malaysian apparently they don't even have like any saving to last them for about like even three months, right? You know, I'm not sure what's the latest data shows like, you know, after this because this this talk was like about uh, two a year before even like, you know, pandemic uh, gets started. Yep. Uh, for Malaysia Financial Planning Council, they will be conducting every two years one research. Every two years, yeah. Okay. And Bank Negara also doing a research. If I remember correctly, Bank Negara, uh, the recent research saying that there are about 70% people are 
having less than 1,000 cash. But oh, of wow. course, that one is depend who is your respondents. Wow. Okay. But uh, even though I, I, I could say that uh, with that type of figure, people having a less cash to spend, if anything hit them, mm. okay, then it will be quite difficult for them to overcome the situation. Okay. That is the reason why uh, we keep saying from the beginning, okay, uh, have your cash mm. and also having your cash flow. Let me, let me repeat what just now you say. You say 70% of Malaysians, mm. they have less than 1,000 ringgit in their saving account. In their saving account. Let's say they want to raise 1,000. That means raise 1,000 means that can I find this 1,000 in my saving account or That's not? That's scary. Uh, scary, but uh, as long as you still have your job, mm. okay, that means your cash flow is still coming You can just keep the in. lights on. Okay, you can still move on. You yeah. can still move on. So that's why I keep emphasizing that uh, you have to differentiate your cash and your cash flow. Sure. Okay. Doesn't mean that you have less saving, you are in an extreme dangerous position. Mm. Okay. But uh, by saying that, I also need to show you some AKPK data. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, for the past 16 years, we actually uh, have about 1.3 million people okay. who came and seek for our counseling services. Sure. Out of the 1.3, 30% already enrolled into the debt management program. Mm. Okay. So what are the problem? One of the problem is they don't have emergency fund. Okay. And they're not doing financial planning. Yeah. Okay. And this is the right time for us with Dr. Riza. We discuss about these financial planning topics. Mm. Okay. Because that is to address when people having the financial problems. It could be because of the bad money management skill that yeah. you just say, okay, I actually earning, mm. but the only problem is I can't save. Yeah. I can't save the money. I Correct. might give you a formula. Formula is simple. Either a 60, 30, 10 ratio or 50, 30, 20 ratio. Mm. Okay. The only thing is, can I save 10%? Many people tell me, cannot, Desmond. Yeah. I plan. I did my budget. I wanted to save for 20%. Then mm. I will ask Dr. Riza, Dr. Riza, show me your plan. How, how you do your saving plan? Mm. Okay. Oh, it's like this, Desmond. Okay. When I got my salary, okay, I will spend. Then the balance I save, I say no way. You can yeah. never save. That's, it's that's, not that's, that way. that's the wrong way all that's the, the wrong time. Way. Yeah. So then they ask, what, what would be the best way? The best way is save something that you even don't see, don't feel it. You don't have a chance to look at it. Mm. Then you start wondering, what is that? What does that mean? Like your EPF. When yeah. you receive your salary, that money automatically deducted to EPF account. Mm. You can't touch that mm. like mentally to put there. Okay? So that also gives you a message. If I want to start with a saving plan, can I do something like auto saving? Mm, yes. Okay, auto saving. What is auto saving means? Okay. That means for salary deduction, but not deduct because of your expenses. Deduct for investment. Yeah. Deduct for saving. Yeah. And make it mentally stay there. Yeah. Until the time frame reach, for example, education plan. Okay. So I don't need to worry a lot. Okay. Automatically deduct for my whatever income I have and put into the education plan. Mm. When my kids reach 18 years old, automatically there's an account. Mm. So that is called auto saving or auto. Uh, investment plan. Yeah. Okay. But that need a lot of uh, discipline. Yes, I think I think the I, I completely agree with you. Discipline is like number one there because mm -hmm. this this is something that I learned it also from uh, one of my mentor. Mm -hmm. It's like you know it's like. Uh, I, I always remember this conversation. It's like, how many bank accounts do you have? <laughs> I said one. Then he said, I know you're broke. Yeah. And I was like, wait, wh why do you say that? He said, like, if you have one bank account, you for sure you're broke because yeah. you don't, you are, you're putting everything in one basket yes. in one account. Yes. And I said, like, well, I would love to do the saving, but you know what? I don't know how to do it because mm -hmm. it's it's just like enough for me to just pay for my expenses. Then. Yeah. Then I remember, you know, my mentor told me that to read this book called, I you know, The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind from T. Harvaker. And then that's where I got introduced to these things that, you know, they say like 60% of your income, whatever yeah. it is, should always be the maximum cap for your yeah. expenses. So it means that you always have a surplus of 40%. Yes. So of course, like some of the audience that we have right now hearing us, they say, oh my God, 60%, that's <laughs> a lot. You know, how do you, how do you make sure your expenses is like 60%? So it's, it's now it goes back again to the point that we're 
started this conversation, whether you want to increase your income mm -hmm. or reduce some of your expenses. Yes. So that's where like, you know, uh, we, you have to make the decision which path to go, which I personally believe that, you know, it's better for you based to always look for what can I do to increase my income, whether it's like, you know, passive or active income. And then, uh, so how to do that, again, goes back to what you said, have this conversation maybe with your superior, with your mentor, with your partner, whatever, that what can, how can we actually invest ourselves to increase our values yes. so that you're worth more to the organization and so on. If I may, I may be just suggest to the viewer and the listener. Yeah. Uh, before you, when you start your conversation with your boss or whoever you wanted to, or put mm. some investment in anything, yeah. uh, I will rather say this first. Can uh, Are you regularly doing your financial health check? Yeah. Yeah. Because and people are scared of doing that. Yes. Okay. Most people. Yeah. That, that is also the reason you feel insecure. Mm. Because you don't know where is your position. Yeah, okay. you don't even know where you yes. are so that you yes. think about where yes. I want to go. Yes, correct. So the, the first step actually, you should do a financial health so how, check. How do you do that for those people who have never done this before, have no idea what you're okay. talking about? Uh, very simple. I just mm. tell you a very simple way. First, your income, you have to define the source of income. Okay. Okay. For employee, very straightforward. Sure. You either have one or two or part-time or whatever. Sure. Okay. For businessman, you just have to, uh, knowing that where's the money coming in, mm -hmm. okay, is it can find a pattern of your income. Yeah, okay. whether is it regular, yeah. is it something yeah, that exactly. is one off, or it's like, yes. you know, happening, yeah. because it's a recurring because, income, yes, right? Yes, exactly, because uh, businessmen sometimes have irregular income. Yeah. So let's let find a pattern of income. Sure. So, okay, so with that, you have a source of income. Mm. Okay. Then you have to just do one simple homework. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you list down the expenses? But I want three category expenses. Three category of expenses. Yes. And what are those three? One is fixed. Okay. Fixed. That means, for example, your car, your rent, house, your the car, car, whatever. The okay. amount is fixed. Uh, the second one is variable expenses. Variable. Maybe your FMB, uh, maybe your uh, school education, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Because variable and utility. Okay. Uh, and the last one I'm quite interested in your discretionary means that this money could be spent on. You you can spend or you cannot spend. But like for example, vacation. Okay. Like okay. a vacation. Okay. 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 Like anniversary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Happy mm -hmm. birthday! <laughs> yeah, it means that something that actually you can you can skip it, but it's you, okay. It's you don't you. spend. It's okay. You don't spend. You have the choice not to do yeah, it. Yeah, just meet the wife's sour face later. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> okay, that's a very scary comment. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But variable expenses, you also put like utility part of the variable expenses. Why? Because. Uh, you know, based on what I understood yeah. from you, variable expenses is something that you can't skip it. You can manage it better. You can reduce it, yes. but you still have to pay. You still have to pay. You still have to pay. Yeah. It's just like it might go up and down, yeah. you know, yeah. depends on like, for example, you you, yeah. you leave all the lights on exactly. or you don't do exactly. that. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. okay. The reason why I brought out all these, because we already, uh, for the past, we keep telling people need M1, need M1. That mm. is on theory. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If I put all these things into statements, uh, this sure. is what it means. Yeah, okay. and that's very scary for people to do. But some people also I have seen. I mean, I have this problem before, Desmond. I, I used to I used to do it for one month, two months, and then yeah. after that I stopped doing it <laughs> <laughs> because because it was it was scary. Sometimes you say like, okay, never mind. Our next month I will make sure I will do this better. <laughs> Actually, I, I I keep telling people uh, why you scared to do because you cannot adhere to what you plan. Yeah, okay. the discipline is not there. Yes, yet. I say okay. Tell me your problem. Okay, I'm okay to do a budget. Okay, that's good enough. Mm. Then after that, what's your problem? I can't do the daily recording. Uh, that actually the problem. Oh yeah, that is very yeah. very difficult. Because budget is one thing. Yeah. If you want to adhere to budget, I need to know where where am I spending. Sure. What am uh, what am I spending on? Yeah. Okay. Then you need to have a record. So you mean daily recording. Daily right? recording. But how about like some people say like, oh my god, that is like so tedious. Yeah. Is there any any shortcut to do that? Oh, or are you sure you want to learn? Um, well, I know your wife is recording. Are you sure? <laughs> if you want, I can tell you. Like one of my colleagues, you know, they, sure, they sure, pass sure. the Go whole ahead. wallet to the wife. Oh the my wife god. every day, every day just give ten ringgit to him. Oh wow, that's yeah. like back to school time. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the way to mm. learn. But what if wife also don't know how to do that? 
Don't underestimate. I mean, yeah, don't myself. underestimate ladies. If they were, if they wanted to, because you know why. Yeah, they, no, I mean that's true. That's yeah, true. They, they say mothers generally yes, they're yes. way better in because planning. I always say that uh, our mother is our first finance minister. Mm. Okay, last yeah. time we got this kind of tooling, budgeting sure. apps and all this. But do you ever find that during our mother I mean, time? I mean, what you're saying is, is it something like got to do with the gender or is like gender? Because I had the same similar yes, conversation yes, yes. with, I remember I was having this board meeting mm. with one of the banks in mm. Malaysia. And then they were saying like, you know, ladies generally, they're way better paymaster compared to guys. You know, they don't <laughs> go through that. Is, is that something the AKPK report also shows uh, that? A KPK report, of course, showing differently, saying that most people are having problems. 70% are from the married men. Married okay. men, 70%. Married men, yes. So <laughs> there's another reason the wife need to keep that and, and monitor for it. But anyway, going back to that topic, the reason why I'm saying this is the ladies actually, they are paying more attention to, okay, spending. to spending and they control it, especially you tell them what to do. Mm. Okay, so mothers, let's say, I only have 50 But is it like really, there is a statistic on this one or? I mean, it really proven through our generation, my generation. No, but is there okay. any like a statistic proof that? Statistic. Do you think there is any data, like for example, from Bank Negaro or something that's saying like, you know, um, uh, ladies are better in terms of finances okay. compared to guys? To be honest with you, uh, I just did my PhD. Okay. Okay, my topic is on the gender also. Oh, nice. Okay, okay. so uh, from my survey, mm -hmm. okay, mm -hmm. ladies, uh, especially ladies, uh, in, in terms of money management, okay, they're quite good in the small item and they're quite good on the recording and quite uh, uh, good at that. More diligent. More, more. I mean, they're more controlled. They're more, more monitored. Control. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay? okay. But when you come to uh, big items investment <laughs> they, they then to be changed you know they become a risk at worst okay oh. ladies then not to take risk i see okay so guys are more risk takers yeah so uh, if you're coming understand the gender difference mm. okay if you leave the uh, uh, what you call a uh, systematic saving systematic expenses mm, or mm, uh, spending mm. you leave it to the ladies they can control it well i see uh, okay but by saying that Desert. Okay, <laughs> by saying that, okay, don't put them on the serving mat. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, because when they found the item they like, mm. okay, that also uh, from the survey that I done, mm. ladies tend to be very uh, being attracted or divert mm. when they are saying that buy one free one. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> buying this you got this, got intentionally she don't mm. want to get this, mm. but because I look at the free gift. Yeah. Okay, then she spent unnecessarily and bought the item. Uh, yeah. uh, always, uh, we heard lady saying, I don't want to buy this, I don't know why I ended up with this. <laughs> okay. Oh, you buy something and you never yeah, use it at the end of the day. Yeah, because of the promotion. Yeah. So, or in our term, we call marketing gimmicks. Yeah, maybe that's one we don't blame ladies for that. We blame all those marketing agencies that they do that. Yeah. yeah. You know, there is this, this uh, I, I remember I was having this conversation with you about like also related to the male and female. And you, you, you highlighted this point related to... Uh, the aging population of mm. Malaysia itself mm. and uh, some some like you know scary data from EPF mm. that shows that also um, most Malaysian uh, they don't have like enough saving in the EPF and I'm not sure you know what is the latest one because a lot of people took out the money also during the pandemic things so that created a little bit of like more drama there so uh, what's what's the, the okay the I, I can only comment based on whatever uh, published by EPF mm. okay in the earlier published uh, publication say state, stated by EPF okay more than 50 percent people have to continue working based on their saving 50 percent of the population they need, they, they, they need to continue. They retire yes they need to continue oh, working wow. okay and uh, having a high percentage finish all their saving within five, seven years. Okay. That means they withdraw all the money. Okay. And they're supposed to last them for the lifespan. Yeah. For example, 72 for men and maybe 78 for women. Or oh, ladies will, will, yeah, will live longer. Don't ask me why we live longer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But that's okay. a very good question, yeah. you know, but not for today's <laughs> not topic. For today, okay. <laughs> so they're supposed to spend for the next 
So 70 years. 78, 72 is the lifespan yeah. of man, 72 female is yes. uh, 78, 78, right? So, okay. and then after that, so how long will it uh, basically the for money example, last for them? For example, if you retire at 55, uh -huh. you suppose with the money that you have, uh -huh. to use it for the next 17, 20 years. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But if you finish it within five years, mm -hmm. it means that you only have two choices. Either you start working again, despite mm -hmm. the EPF claim, you have to start work again to look for oh. your cash flow. Otherwise, you can't. You mean they don't work for like maybe five years and after that? They finish all the saving. They finish all the saving after yes. they start to work again. Yes. And, that, and by that time, you're already yeah. at 65 or maybe like, you know, 70 years old. Yes. Wow. So the, this is one thing that I have to worry about. And mm. secondly, okay, you, you have maybe have to depend on your children. Yeah. But don't forget our children nowadays, like just you and me, it's like a sandwich generation. Mm. We need to look after our kid. We look to have to lead, to look after our family. Correct. If you have to look after your parents, mm. okay. So all this will become a, a high pressure for us, and we already say that uh, Malaysia is going into aging uh, population in the year of twenty thirty. Twenty thirty. Malaysia yes. will. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. So what, just, what is the, what is so scary about that? Because when uh, the nation become uh, aging nations, mm -hmm. your productivity will become uh, very much depend on the young generation. Sure. Okay. So you'll be dropping in terms of the productivity. Okay. 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 And GDP, and you have to spend a lot of money of taking care of the elderly generation. Um, I see. I think uh, we all know. Yeah. When we are getting old. Uh, we need a better health care. Mm. We need to spend more money and. Medications. Mm, uh, that yeah. is something that the country need to spend more money. Whereby, the only rely and the decline working force. Sure. They make people. This is something happening in Japan, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That is something that uh, we need to be cautious on. Malaysia is moving into aging generation in 2030. So what what people can do about it to uh, to avoid this or having more kids? It's not a friendly. Uh, strategy or policy mm -hmm. uh, one thing of course you extend the retired age okay, okay. instead of uh, Dr. Reza we can both retire at 55 now now you're 65 you mm -hmm. have to work another 10 years okay so okay. Uh, people like you and me might feel that oh, okay instead of enjoying for 10 years now I have to work for another 10 years mm -hmm. okay of course first you do you want to extend your retirement age okay or the second, you must have a better saving plan. Okay. Okay. In order for you to uh, really uh, work on and contribute back to the society. Sure. Uh, this, these two things like you can do. Okay. So let's let's have like some uh, very quick questions on uh, the financial part of it. So uh, you know, one one of the things that I have been very um, amazed. I mean, it's not only about Malaysia. It's it's about all around the world that um, they don't teach kids about money. Uh, when they are at school, they don't teach even in universities, you know, people only get to know about the money and the value of money and how the money works only when they get their first job, right? So um, what, what advice would you give to parents, you know, because controlling what the teachers do or universities they teach to the students, uh, you know, it's, it's something that is not within our control. Right, but what's very what within our control is like we as a parent. What can we teach to our kids about the value of money? So, what what would be like one or two lessons that you definitely think like every parent need to kids to, to teach to the kids when they're okay. still younger? Okay, uh, first, our education system. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I really think that you need to tailor mm. the different uh, behavior of the kids. Okay, you you cannot have one standard and do it for all. Mm. So by saying that, whoever are listening, the parents out there, that how, to, how do I know about my kids? How they behave against money? Mm. I say use a simple exercise. You can try it maybe during the weekend, sure. if you want to eat. Yeah. Okay? Uh, during weekend, you go to the shopping mall, just give 50 ringgit to your kids, mm -hmm. tell them, buy whatever, buy whatever you want. The what, what age of child are you, you talking you can about? As long as they, they know this money. As long as they know that this is money. This is money. Yeah, or money this can is... buy the stuff, that's all. Okay. You can start with maybe five years old, seven years old. As long as they know this money, we got this money. To do this yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
from this exercise, I can uh, give you a result straight away. Sure. Okay. There are always three type of behavior from the kids behave. Okay. Okay. The first group is within one minute. Okay. They will come back. Oh. That done. Oh, done. They already done. bought it. They bought something forty nine dollar ninety cent. You give me fifty forty nine ninety. Okay. <laughs> done. Well done. Oh uh, yeah. Well done. Okay. But I should give a credit for the creativity, you know, they can find something 4990. 4990, that's, that's okay. Like pretty good. Yeah. Done. <laughs> the other one is maybe five, ten minutes. Slightly longer. Okay. Okay. He still bring back okay, two to three items which add together. Mm. Okay. It's around fifty. Okay. Okay. All right, that's an interesting so, observation. Dr. Riza keep waiting, waiting half an hour. What happened to my kid? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then finally I have to look for the kid. Undecisive. Okay? Because he's checking price and this item and that item. Mm. Okay? He wants to look for the best price. I see. Okay, now we have the result. You know how your kids behave. When they have money, okay, within their control, okay, they can spend whatever the way they want. Mm. Uh, then from there, you know how to train your kids. Okay. If that one Straight away, get back something. Okay, I think you have to instill more on saving. Okay. All right. So you have to talk to them about yes, like what saving yes. and all. Okay. okay. I can give you some tips. Let Let's say, uh, your, your son. Let's say your son come back to you, Daddy. I want to buy a racket, a badminton racket. Cost me seven hundred ringgit. I know I will start borrowing from the chair. Mm. Seven hundred ringgit a racket. <laughs> okay. But please don't say no. Mm. That's a fantastic idea. I think every good player needs a good racket. Yeah. 700 ringgit. But, but. I, I rather, okay, you have your plan, save it, but let me share with you how to save it. Oh, okay. so you're taking it as an opportunity for yes. teaching them about like saving. So the best place is like something that they really want it. Yes, from the okay. pocket money. Okay. 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 So my lesson is simple. Daddy give you 50 ringgit or 200 ringgit or 100, depending on what you're trying to give it to him. Mm. Let's say if you save, able to save that 50%, 50 percent, mm. 50 ringgit, okay, for this particular month, Daddy will top up another 50 ringgit for you. That's, that's, that's great. Yeah. Okay, so after seven months, you finally have 700 ringgit. Yeah. Now do a test. Do, now do a test. Okay, come, let's go and buy. Daddy, hold on. It's not easy to save 50 ringgit a month. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I think I want to change my mind. Mm. Okay. Then you already train them how to delay qualifications and have oh, a I saving see. plan. Secondly, you know what the fantastic of this plan? When you go back to the same store, okay, the record price from 700 dropped to 500. Okay. So that also gives the child a lesson. Mm. Don't hurry on buying things that you want. Mm. Give yourself some time. But what if it's the other way around? The kids say, now it's a promotion because now we, we were talking about promotion. Fantastic. <laughs> this is an investment. Uh. Uh. So if this item have a grow in value, it's called investment. Mm. Uh. So look at this type of item, put the money, why not you put money in this item? For example, I don't care what's the item. If it can grow in value, mm. it's something that People appreciate and you can grow in value. And what if they say, like, for example, okay, now it's a promotion, it's the end of the mm. year, I have to purchase mm. it. If I don't buy it now, two months later, it's going to be like more expensive. Yes. Yes. You know, so how, how, do you, how do you. The child will explain to you, Daddy, your idea is not good. Mm. After seven months, uh, okay, <laughs> uh, whatever, they will come and tell you. But at the same time, you can also tell them, okay, the items that they produce, you, every time you see a new item, they carry a new features. Mm. If you wait for another seven months, who knows? Better one. A better record come in. Okay? Or maybe you can get it on sales. Sure. Okay? Because we all know yeah. whenever it's new launching, the price is definitely non negotiable. Yeah. How can a new product launch it at a promotion? The promotion item is always after some years. Yeah, okay. that's true. That's true. Yeah. You know, I, I just just before we go back to your story, <laughs> yeah, like so you talk about saving child. I remember when we were small, mm. uh, my parents used to talk, uh, used to always tell us like, you know, you want to earn more money, you should read books. Yeah. So that that was the the way for us to to get the 
get extra cash, yeah. you know. And uh, we used to have like this, these things like my dad would buy us a book and I pick one book for myself. And then he was always saying like, you know, you want to earn more money? Read book, you know. So I had this conversation with my dad and I said that, uh, you know, one of my friends, he put the garbage out. He's getting paid for that. And then he said <laughs> like, you know, well, maybe, you, you know, the parents of your your friend, they want him to become a car garbage cleaner. Yes, you know, yes, we're not going to pay yes. you for that. The other part of the family, yes. go put the garbage yes, out. Yes. You know, so he said the only way to earn more. I mean, at that age, of course, we didn't have a job. You know, so the only way to earn extra was through um, what we call that reading good books. And I think yeah. that planted yes. the seeds, you know, in our hearts yeah. to really understand the importance of education. Yes. You know, I wouldn't say like all those books that you read, it, it, it's helping you today. But what I'm saying is that I am who I am because of those seeds that planted in those years, you know. That is exactly what I say. Uh, as a parent, mm. we have to understand our children, okay, what their behavior, okay, because uh, we are the first teacher for our children. Yeah. So you only you will pay 100%. You cannot blame the teachers. Mm. You are the one as a parent. You are in control. You are in control and you need to really, uh, I think no one knows better than you. Yeah. Okay, how your kid behave, uh, whether what is the item they need, okay, especially knowing them from young. Mm. Okay, because if you see the problem now, okay, you don't rectify it, okay, the problem will magnify itself. Sure. Okay, if you cannot let them understand the value of money, okay, they know that the money I earn, I can spend, frankly speaking, there will be no saving for him. Yeah. And it's very hard for you, Dr. Riza, to tell him. Mm. But what's your problem there? Yeah. It's my own money, my hard earned money. Mm. You have no control on whatever earning that I'm earning myself. Yeah. Uh, then it's going to be a tough time for you. Okay? True. But don't worry, he will learn his lesson. <laughs> Yeah, he yeah. will learn his lesson. But we don't want that that to happen because you know if they want uh, to learn every lesson by themselves, right? It might uh, take a very long time. Some time for me, Doctor Riza, I have to be honest with you. Mm. Uh, why people are inviting us for a talk? Okay, most of my talk, I don't talk about success story. Mm. Okay, as it, you know, people learn from failures yes. way better. As you know, I'm working for AKPK and people having the financial issue. Okay. Instead of telling you uh, how to become very successful and this and that, every day you heard people say, I make a million, I make like I said before you become a millionaire, okay, you have to try to identify where is the pitfall, where is the failure. Okay, now I explain to you why. Okay. As far as I concern is as long as you control your desire. Control your desire, okay. Yes, okay. You don't overspend to that, uh, more than the money you earn. Mm. Okay. That is the minimum of foundation you already set. Yeah. Okay. Remember, we keep talking about uh, saving fund, emergency fund, and all that. Yeah. Okay. The next question I will ask: When you keep on saving for emergency fund until one stage, you have more fund. Mm. Okay. Then you can go for your investment when you have money. You know what's the problem nowadays? People have no saving, no money. They go and invest. Mm. So at the end, you're hoping for fast money. I only looking for ROI. Yeah. But if I already have uh, one pot of money, okay, what I asking for maybe five six percent, and I doing it regularly, dollar cost averaging. Mm, mm. Do you think I need to chase again return? Not necessary. First thing first, you already create a discipline, a habit of saving. What I just what I need to do is just putting in money, regular yeah. investment. Yeah. Okay. Until a stage, there is already a sufficient fund. Mm. Okay. Then I decide what I want to do. I don't want to start a business. I don't want to do uh, continue my study. I did not need to get anyone help. I don't even go to the bank. Mm. Okay, I already have that. Yeah, uh, that is something that more valuable. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's that's not so. Just just like you know, to end that story that just mm -hmm. now I mentioned. So the first one is like if the kids come back and then with no money and all spend it all right so you can teach them about saving. What about the one that is broke it down into few items? What what lesson would you give to that kids? Okay, uh, definitely there are some kids who is doing good. Okay, they have a few items. So the next, uh, if let's say you come back with three items, okay, you can ask him. For these three items, is it the cheapest that, is it a competitive to this item or not? Mm -hmm. Okay, you try to ask him first, or you just matching the price. Mm. Okay, have you read the 
uh, whatever the the labels there saying that mm. okay, is it suitable for you? Is it good for you? Okay, so you're trying okay. to find the reasoning yes. behind like you why buy, you spend, especially how you spend. for ladies, for the sake of buying. Mm. <laughs> okay. okay, that would put you in trouble <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of reading the, 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 the instruction, the label, <laughs> all this, and do a comparison, okay? And because of the price tag, you are just going for the price tag. Mm, yeah. uh, that's something that you can explain to him. Yeah. Okay, but what I worry the most is the undecided. The, the one we're still comparing, can't come back and all this. Okay. 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 So, um, why? why are you worried about that? First, maybe the, uh, the first time. He, he never know, okay? Uh, this is the decision making time for him because all this while daddy mommy is making all the decisions all the decisions okay. okay now it's a decision time for me okay they worry about the wrong decision mm. okay. so okay. Lisa, you know where I'm coming from mm, yeah okay this is the time you have to tell them or tell him okay it's okay to make mistakes I see okay it's okay to sometimes overspend and all this okay don't put too much of Blame uh, on yourself and, and too much of pressure on yourself. Mm. Okay, because I need to uh, tell all the listener here also. Okay, money is one of the factor cause of mental illness. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay? Because you are paying too much attention, yeah, you, you cannot handle the pressures. Mm. Okay, maybe this is the time. Yeah, I remember mm. this uh, this very very interesting lesson that, uh, you know, you know, most people they say like, oh. Uh, you want to teach your kids something, let's, especially you're a business owner, right? You know, and then they will say like, oh, all you need to do, you just bring your kids and put them into every department in the company and then let them learn from scratch so that they learn everything. Yeah, so they say like, you know, that's, that's, the, that's a very classic advice that people give like you know, as a business owner or someone who wants to teach their kids some stuff. But then um, that's actually is not the most efficient way to do it. The most efficient way to do it is to teach your kids decision-making power mm. it means like how do you make decision mm. like so i'm having a meeting for example with a marketing department mm. and just just sit down there and see me how mm. am i making decisions mm. or what questions do i ask mm. you know mm. what is it very important to me to make a decision mm. because once you understand how people make decision mm. you also download their value yes. you download their experience you download the way they take risk mm. where to take risk where not to take risk mm. what's important to ask because if you want to go through trial and error, if you want to start from scratch, you don't get to the point of decision making. Yes. Decision making, it's kind of like, you know, starting from the top and going downwards and learn every, the whole business mm. through it. So lens of a decision maker is very important. Yeah, that was an interesting, you know, things that you shared just can, now. Can I give you a real case oh, about, yeah, please. Uh, about what you just say? I, I come across one of my Chinese friends. Mm. The father want to pass the business down to him. So the father had the same thought like what you just say. Yeah. In order to run my business, you must know everything. Yeah. In my business. Yeah. So he make his son doing the sales, production, the accounting, finance, and all this. Okay. Do you want to hear, especially businessmen who are listening, do you want to hear the real feedback from your son? Let's say uh, you are already in that. The real feedback mm. from your son. What he think about your decision yeah. of making him doing everything all the thing okay his feedback to me is like something that catch my mind you know husband i don't think this one is a good idea mm -hmm. okay this is for people that don't know what they want mm. you are trying to find out your interest mm. but for someone like me okay i already know what i want yeah okay but my father way of doing, does it mean that if I want to be a car maker, I really need to know how to make a car? And make a car, yeah. Okay? Mm -hmm. If I want to know how to be That's a banker, true. do I need to know how to print money? <laughs> That's true. Uh, That's true. So, I need to uh, tell my dad, okay, emphasis on my interest and your strength, yeah. what is uh, my lacking, and then do the one I'm lacking of or on my strength. Mm, uh, mm, basically, mm. you're talking about SWOT analysis. Sure. Okay. So, this is something that maybe we can uh, uh, enlighten some of our viewer yeah. and listener. Yeah. Okay. Understand, understand everyone is different. Yep. Okay. So, sometime, uh, when I want to talk about this topic, I rather uh, relate back to my finance. This is how the debt management starts. Okay. The debt management is because you do not know what you want. 
Mm. You do not know your style of spending. Mm. Okay? That's why you end up with uh, overspend and all this. As long as you know what you want, okay? you don't need to have so many financial goals at one time. Yeah. Okay? Just set one. Most important one. Out of 10, I, I always start, I like to start this. Can you list down all your financial goals? Okay? So sometimes you can see 20, oh, 30 financial goals. Mm. Okay. In financial goals, you are referring to like car, house, whatever you uh, want to achieve, whatever, yeah, okay. which require money yes, to get it right. Exactly. Mm. Okay. So most people have five or six. Okay. But I, I'm paying attention to one ladies. Oh. Okay. Only one. Only, Only one, one financial goal. Okay. Only one. Okay. So he want to buy a house, not for her, for her parents. I see. Okay. Because she see the way how hard. The parents want that house. Mm. All this while they're renting house. Yeah. Okay. So that make her determined, paying full attention of getting the house and to be honest, within 10 years, pay cash. True. That, that is determination and knowing what you want. You don't need to have so many. Yeah. Yep. So what's the um what is the best financial advice you have ever got in your life? I think my uh, the best thing that I ever done and uh, the best advice I ever done is that my business closed down. Okay, that is the best financial advice when I look at my own company financial statement. Mm -hmm. Okay, I never thought it's that bad. Okay, I always listen. I always think that I'm doing well. I'm running a good sales. Okay, so until uh, my accountant's friend come and tell me, that's when you even, uh, if I come to know about your business, if I were you, I don't even want to start it. Mm. I don't even want to start it. Okay? So he gave me the advice. Next time, next time, I don't know whether it's the next time, but he said next time, any business that you want to start, you don't aim for profit. Mm. Okay? You aim for how to get all the expenses covered and minimize your First, as the fixed expenses, okay, as little as the maybe ten percent of your total revenue. Is it possible? You try, okay, because that advice give really enlightened me that I'm not doing enough homework to start this business. Mm. Okay, I always assume I can get more revenue to cover for the uh, more sales to cover for the expenses. Okay, okay, so this is the best advice. Uh, enlighten me when you want to start business you don't aim for profit first mm. just tell me how you turn around this business with uh, break even and how to ensure the business can sustain more than three years that's all mm. okay. that is already a good point so if you want to give an advice uh, if you want to give an advice to Desmond when he was like 20 years old what would be advice that what, what advice would you give to yourself I might be go again my own words, uh, but I to be honest, if really uh, I can go back to the time darkness and I can make a choice, to be honest, okay, I rather advise twenty years back me, you should complete your degree, you should study hard. Okay, okay. <laughs> because uh, if you have a proper education, okay. Of course, uh, my feeling on it, uh, you do need to go through the up and down and, and such a tough life when you need to really uh, finish your day job, 6 o'clock, then you need to rush to the college, continue your study at 7, reach home 10.30, when your wife has to wait for you for dinner at 11. Okay? That really quite challenging. And with that, I need to thank my wife uh, for tolerating me for that for two years. But I keep doing that. And of course, for my late parents, why I'm doing, I, I'm not sharing with Dr. Riza just now also. Actually, why I, I wanted to continue my second PhD. Uh, it started in 2015 mm. when my mom diagnosed cancer. She's very, uh, very down and like uh, not having uh, courage to face the disease. Okay, so I want to tell her that time, okay, let's do it together. Okay, your son is going to do another PhD. Unfortunately, uh, I take too long. 
Okay, she unable to see. It. Okay, and I thought my father could see, it, but unfortunately, uh, she also couldn't. He also couldn't see. It. Okay, but I need to thanks two of them. Okay, thanks be not 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 only they give me a life. Okay, they teach me a lot of things. Okay, we form a simple family. My my parents not educated. Okay, but they show us. They keep telling me that. With your dedications, if you really want to make it, you can do it. Okay, they are from the small village of uh, Para, and they come all the way here. And my father started a business, and that is already a moral. I keep telling everyone now. Okay, my hero for me is my father. Mm. Okay, I learn things from my mother. Okay, so that is something that I gratitude. I uh, my, my my express my uh, appreciation to them. Okay, so honestly, for the youngster who are listening to this program, okay, uh, my tip still the same. Of course, I hope uh, if you really miss your time, you are not doing your study maybe during your, your younger time. Okay, never too late to start. But if you are in your school now, okay, please pay attention. Okay, do your complete your study. You never know. You never know. This means how much for your parents. Okay, at least do this thing for your parents. Mm -hmm. Okay, not everyone have a chance of doing that. If you miss that opportunity, uh, I wouldn't say regret for me. I already done my best. Okay, but I think there's still something I could do more for the parents. Thank you. Sure. Thank you very much, Desmond. I really appreciate your time. It was really a pleasure talking to you. So uh, we would definitely want to love to have you on the, on the podcast one more time. So guys, we hope this conversation has inspired you to know more and learn more with us. So please tune in in our next podcast. And as, as always, I say, we love to have you around. Thank you for sharing. And make sure you live an in-control life. What is the in-control life? The life that you love what you do. You love who you're doing it with. You love who you're doing it for and you love how you do it. See you soon.